welcome everyone. This is another episode of Wilinski Show. And for you this day, we found something I believe very special. Something that I believe people need to try a couple of times in the lifetime experience. We have a Mari with us who is general manager of Tabeta Winery. Wine real, one estate. One estate. Yes. If you can tell us a little bit like how come that you got this wonderful job pretty much because I think comes around with this beautiful lifestyle. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, I used to work in tourism and unfortunately with COVID came and um, you know what, I lost my job because of COVID. Mm. Um, so then trying to find a new job, they were searching for someone here in events. So I started like that yes. and uh, slowly, slowly, well, we're a very small team and uh, started, you know, studying and uh, understanding everything. Yes. And then finally, here I am um, running a bit this uh, this winery and it's uh, it's an amazing job. <laughs> I can imagine. You were very smiley from the first moment we came. And again, you are French as well. Correct. So I think you have the wine in your blood. So something like that in our DNA. Yeah, in your DNA. <laughs> so sometimes, for example, a part of this beautiful wine you have, yeah. When you see like what supermarkets offer or something, how do you feel? Like well, trade in a way? No, not really. I mean, I do believe that there is wine for everyone. It's like food. You know, some people like Asian food, some people prefer Mediterranean food. So thank God there were so many wines on the market because there were so many options that you can choose from. Mm. So I think it's more of a strength than, you know, than the competition really. I think what I like the most about the whole idea of the wine house is like, it's produced in Malta, it's very Maltese, and I think it's attached beautiful history to, to, to them. Because I think normal bottles you would see like specific name, but you came with the names of, of what so are the... The Grand Masters of the Order of St. John. Mm. They already wanted to personalize the product as much as possible. So they chose different Grand Masters with different history, different characters and some of them are pairing very well with the character of our wines. Mm. So that's the idea behind it. As you can see, the label is um, it's, it's very, very clean. Uh, you just have the name and then you will have a small picture which is part of the coat of arm of each of the, of the Grandmaster. Mm. So that's from where it, uh, it started. Yes, if you can tell us as well, I think itself, the name Tabeta, it has some deeper meaning as well, right? Correct. So as you can see on the logo, um, it's a little girl holding the vine mm. and everything about Tabeta started uh, back in 2002 when the owner decided to purchase a small piece of land and that's when they just had their daughter Bettina. So Ta meaning belonging to and Beta um, being a small nickname and the logo being her obviously holding the, the vines. Mm. So that's from where it started and that's why we really don't want it to personalize as much as possible since we're quite a boutique wine estate. So very small, yes. very small production and uh, personalize it. Okay, so I think because it's the winery, mm -hmm. people can come and visit, do the, the tasting. I think this is the best thing can happen. I think I don't see better Saturday evening plan. <laughs> so the groups can start from only even two people, right? Even two person. And goes up to 35. 35, exactly. Um, yes, we wanted to have a bit of an exclusive kind of wine and also an exclusive experience. Yes. So we don't do any groups, so even if you are two, it will be just exclusive for you. So the whole winery is uh, is just uh, just for you. Uh, we wanted to have, you know, for people to really have a nice experience. So we do one tasting. We also have a kitchen. So we work with different caterers and restaurants on the island. Yes. And you can come here, we can do a wine pairing dinner or lunch. We are also going to start with uh, doing some picnics. We have a lovely olive grove and uh, yes, in summer it's nice, you're under the shade of the olive grove, you know, with a bit of wine, yes. <laughs> nothing better than that. <laughs> so let's imagine this, like a lovely couple that decided to spend a Saturday afternoon here. Yeah. So from the moment they come, the whole experience takes like two or three hours, we would exactly. say. So we start with a, a tour of the, of the vineyard, hopefully weather permitting. Yeah. Um, and then we will be explaining how the magic happens downstairs in the winery. And then they will be tasting our three wines um, together with nice platters of cold cuts and cheese dips. Mm. I mean, you have a lot of things. Yeah. So it's a, it's a fun experience. Okay. So behind us, you can see that beautiful picture that is associated with the wineries, right? We see those little trees, I sort of 
like dry for the moment, right? Yeah. So which moment of the year we are within the production? So right now the vines have just um, gone out of the dormancy. And so as I was telling you, we need to have quite a bit of energy for them during the winter. So they need to build it mm. in order to start producing for the new season. So they don't ripen at the same time. So some of them are still looking pretty dead. Some of them you start seeing some leaves. Um, then slowly, slowly the flowers will be coming through and then the small grapes getting bigger, bigger, and then they change color, and then finally, from the beginning, middle of August, till end of September, we'll be doing the, the harvest. So this is like the busiest period for you there, right? Yes, mm. yes, yes, yes. The most exciting as well? Exactly. <laughs> and the most stressful as well. I can imagine. Because at that point, you're like, okay, it's ready, and sometimes, you know, because uh, we, um, uh, we have to see as well the level of sugar in the grapes. Mm. That's how we determine when the, the harvest will be happening. And sometimes you think it's ready, and unfortunately the weather, you know, turns too hot, or it will turn away with the first rain in September. Mm. So then um, things go not the right, the right way. But yes, you can control a lot of things, but the weather, it's still something which is complicated. Yes. Okay. So that's the normally people love that part about Malta, like it's super hot. But yes, for some uh, businesses, it's a challenge, right? Yes, we don't have any frost. So, I mean, in other countries, that's the problem. Early frost or spring frost, which is the worst for them. We don't have this problem here, but then we have the heat. Mm. But then, you know, I mean, Malta being a very Catholic country, when it starts raining and you want the sun to come back as soon as possible, maybe you can go around the 365 churches, put a little candle everywhere and you pray for the sun <laughs> to come back. <laughs> Good luck with this, yes. So, what I can see, one bottle is open. Correct. What would be nice to see? If, uh, you know, that uh, moment when you arrive in a restaurant, they put the first glass and they ask who will taste it. Correct. So can we see how you taste it? Of course. Because there must be some magic to it, I guess. Let's see. So, first you will be blowing a bit. Yes. So then the important thing, first of all, is just to look at it. You know, when you're going to start eating something, you look at what you're going to eat. So you want to make sure that nothing is hanging in there, that it's looking a normal color, which is like in this case a nice, uh, a nice ruby red. And then you're going to start swirling the wine. That's an important part, and it's not because it just looks snobbish and it looks good. You can open it, no? no? Exactly. The wine has been in the bottle for quite some time. You want it to wake up a bit. So you want it to have a bit of oxygen coming through. And that's going to develop the, the smell of it. Mm -hmm. So once you do that, you start smelling it. So once again, it has to smell like, you know, even if you don't know anything about wine, mm -hmm. you know what smells good and smells bad. So if it smells bad, there was definitely something wrong with it. Mm -hmm. um, so sometimes it's a cork bottle, so you have this kind of um, damp cardboard kind of smell. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, in this case, it smells quite well. <laughs> <laughs> so then when you, when you start knowing a bit about your wine, and depending what you're going to smell, you're going to see from where the wine is coming from. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, on a white wine, if it's something very citrusy, um, with like some apple maybe into it, you can see oh, maybe this wine is coming from a cold country. Mm. On the contrary, if it's more on tropical fruits, then it will be from a warmer country. Um, this one you can definitely smell that there was quite a bit of power into it. So you can see that it's coming from a warm country because the, the sugar are quite there. Another thing that you can also, another tip that you have is when you swirl the wine, you have this tiny bit of um, drops falling Mm -hmm. Thanks to that, if the drops are falling very slowly, and that means that the level of alcohol is quite high in your, in your wine, because the level of sugar is quite high. In this case, it's going down quite slowly. Mm. Um, this wine, if I'm not mistaken, is a 14% alcohol, so... It's quite short for wine. Yes. And then finally, you can taste it. It's important in a way that you keep a bit of your wine in your mouth for a bit. Mm -hmm because it's going to touch all the areas in your mouth. And again, there you're going to say, okay, there was a bit of that, there was a bit of that. And again, it has to taste good. <laughs> if it tastes like vinegar or something, it's definitely wrong with your wine. Yeah. Um, but then, you know, after maybe five seconds, you can say, okay, this wine is okay, and we can drink it. Mm. I think you are perfect for the job. I think everybody appreciates how you do it and how naturally it comes to you. It's beautiful to see a little show. A bit of experience on drinking every day. <laughs> <laughs> That's the fun part, yes. So in, in general, do you see like people start waking up and start craving that better quality of wine? So 
Yes, in a way that people are not very, somehow in Malta, people are not very familiar with Maltese wine. They're mm -hmm. the favorite one who have been around for quite some time. Yes. Um, but the thing is, some people don't like to experience. It's like when you go to the restaurant, you go through the list of wine and you know which one you like. And you say, okay, this one, you know, it's sure that I'm going to like it. Yes, yes, yes. So you're not going to try something else. But I think it's important to, yeah, to try different things. And no, but I think what you create in that tasting, give that opportunity. Yes. Like you will have for sure something you like, but at least you have something else as well. Yes, yes, yes. And that part of education, I think, is nothing better. Because imagine you will drink just one till the end of the days. Yes. No, there must be something more. And that's the fun thing about tasting. You meet all kinds of people. People who have no clue about the wine, you know, they're just like, okay, I like that, but that's all I know about it. And some people who obviously are very much into it. So yes, you have this opportunity of teaching a bit to people of how to, because when you go to the restaurant, it's quite intimidating. Sometimes you they arrive with this Bible of wine and you're like, okay, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> what, <do you> <laughs> what am I going to yes. have? Um, so yes, it's a, for us, it's a bit important, not just to make taste our wine, but also to explain a bit mm. from where everything is coming from. Yes. No, but I think it's nice because so you have this kind of responsibility of, yeah, not only fun, which obviously it is, but that educational part, which I think people, you know, when they leave the experience, they feel like, you know, I actually learned something new yeah. and it's nice. No? And the thing also is that we try to adapt as much as possible with the public that we have. Like I don't want to bore people with fermentation, with everything which is happening into that if they're not interested into it. Yes. So more about trying to compare things so that people can understand better. Because people tell me a great is a great. So why Merlot, why Cabernet Sauvignon? And, yeah. and I like to say like, for example, you know, it's a bit like perfume. Sometimes you have a perfume, which is just rose. Yes. And then you have blends, like you have rose and jasmine. Well, it's the same thing about wine. You can have 100% Cabernet Sauvignon, but then we can do blends. We can play also with different kind of aromas, you know? Yeah. So like that, you know, you understand better because perfume is something that people get yeah. most of the time, especially ladies. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, I mean, you have to play a bit with it because being French especially, I know that there is all this, again, this snobism about wine and it has to be broken a bit, it has to be more approachable. Yes, and I think what is nice to mention for, for the people who would actually come and try that experience, you have as well like an olive tree yes. and you produce some uh, olive oil. Correct. How nice. So the olive oil is also part of our tasting. Mm -hmm. So we have approximately 250 olive trees around the, the winery. Now we do 600 liters approximately. Yes. So we finished the harvest of, uh, of the vineyard in September. Mm -hmm. And then October we start with the, the olives. Yes, no, because I think people appreciate the good olive oil, you know. Yes, if it's yes, produced yes. here, it gives that beautiful part of, the, of it. And especially that, that's the thing that we have to remember about Malta. I mean, Malta, there was a lot of imported products. But they have beautiful products as well on the islands. Mm. You know, I mean, the, the vegetables and the fish and even the meat, they're starting to have some really nice meat as well. Mm. And, you know, when you combine everything which is local with also local wine, it's even better because... And it's you the want best you can get. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Okay, guys, I think opinion will leave it for you but i see how i mean you see how beautiful everything comes i think coming to the tasting i don't think is one of the best experience you can get in malta actually so definitely follow for more there is a website you can book your experience you can find all the important uh, informations and yes what not to like thank you for your time you're more than welcome we are big fans of tabetta and for Let's sure for your glass of wine as well so that you can taste it <laughs> That is the reason we're here, to be honest. <laughs> here we go. Thank you very much. That was Mari for you. And we guys will see you shortly. Thank you very much.